If you like what you're hearing on the phillytech.org netcast network, please consider supporting the network with a small monthly donation via patreon.com slash phillytechorg. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash p-h-i-l-l-y-t-e-c-h-o-r-g. And thank you in advance. You're listening to The Interview Show with Seth Goldstein on the phillytech.org netcast network. Thank you to our sponsors, wistia.com, Zoho Mail, and getflywheel.com. And we are live. Hello, to ep- hello, and welcome to episode forty. Yes, episode forty said, is a big number. And you know who that is? That's Howard Yermish. It's me. I kind of feel like of we're t- recording tomorrow, except it's today. Yes, this is an interview show, episode forty, not social media addicts. The interview show, episode forty, and we are interviewing our very own Howard Yermish. Hey, it's me. And. And the good thing, the thing about most people don't know, actually most people do know about, but like Howard has, is now doing courseware. And about LinkedIn is his latest one. Um, what's it called again, Howard? It is called Powerful Social Sales with LinkedIn. Exactly. I've been taking it and it's very interesting, very time consuming. So I haven't been as good about following it as much as I should, but I have been watching the videos and smiling and making faces at Howard's face, you know. But I've been enjoying it for the most part. So... Uh, the more than the most part, I, mean, I have been enjoying it, and I've been looking at his handouts, and you know, anyone who's really looking to get a handle on LinkedIn and isn't already on LinkedIn, hasn't been on it for, the, for a long time, should probably check out his course. It's not too expensive. Howard, how much is it? The Well, and I have a special promo code, so if you listen Ooh. to the end of this episode, um, I will give out a, a $50 uh, coupon off of the course. So instead of the regular price of two twenty five, mm-hmm. it will only be one seventy five, and that is nice to you. Thank you, Howard. Oh well, of course. Exactly. So listen to the end of this show. We promise we won't bore you. And Howard will give out the promo code for fifty dollars off of his powerful social selling on LinkedIn course. Correct. Did I say that correctly? That's yeah, close enough. Close enough, close enough. So you can find it at howardyermish.com. It's H-O-W-A-R-D. Did I spell that correctly? Yeah, howardyermish.com. H-O-W-A-R-D-Y-E-R-M-I-S-H.com. Just go to that homepage. You'll see a great big square thing that says Powerful Social Sales with LinkedIn, and pop, you'll go right there. And there's also another one as well on there, isn't there, Howard? Uh, there is a free course on there called Tips for an Effective LinkedIn Profile. That's, and it's interesting because to kind of dive into the course and sort of what yes. it's about. Mm-hmm. Um, when I was working on this course initially, those two courses were in the same thing. And here's what I found. The powerful social sales um, using LinkedIn is really the methodology that I've used to train people how to be really effective with LinkedIn and the tracking mechanism. And every single person that I ever worked with on LinkedIn, one of the first things that we ever did was say, okay, your profile's got to be awesome. But that profile step was more of like a one-time thing. Like, let's get your profile really good. I recommend that you check in every six months and you you tweak it as things change. But, Mm -hmm. you know, if you're doing the same thing that you did last year, your Mm -hmm. profile's probably going to look very similar. If you change things or you have a new focus or you want to you know, if you wanted to look for a job or you might move your profile around depending on different points in your life, but it's more life event as opposed to, well, I should do this to my profile because that really helps me. Um, Absolutely, yeah. What I always taught in in my general methodology, it came from this whole concept of you never know who you need to ask and when you need to ask them, but when it's that time, you better have been a really nice person before then. So, so don't uh, be a jerk. So don't be a jerk. But um, my the, the way than, I started more using LinkedIn, it's more than that, right? It's more it's than a, just not being a jerk. It's yeah. being front of mind almost, right? It it really is. So um, I started using LinkedIn in about 2005. It was very early in the service. I wasn't the first on LinkedIn, but I was definitely within the first couple years of LinkedIn. Um, 
And I started using it, and I knew at that point there were very few people professionally who used it. It was a, it was one of those things where maybe five to ten percent of the people that I would come in contact used it. But I had this great situation where there was a client that I was trying to get. I overheard at a networking event that this particular client was in the market for a web project, and it was a good project. It was going to be a really significant, like this would be a great sales win, and. Instead of going up to that person at the network event saying, hey, I do web development, you should talk to me, I decided that I was going to do my homework. And instead of just like calling people and randomly saying, do you know this company, do you this company, I used LinkedIn. And what that allowed me to do was a couple steps. The first step was to really figure out who, with that person who I overheard, who I knew who it was, mm -hmm. who they knew that I knew too. So I could kind of stack the deck in my favor. I could get someone to say, oh, yeah, I heard you were looking for a web developer. Well, you should talk to Howard. You should talk to his company and, and work with that. I did that step. That was very natural. I had lots of people who were like planting little seeds as, hey, look, Howard's awesome. But I also used that research <laughs> tool. So that was good. But I also used that research tool yeah. to figure out how everybody who was going to be in that decision-making room for that company all of their contacts. So mm -hmm. I found out that, okay, I, I figured out there were going to be about five key decision makers. And yes. I made sure that all five of those decision makers had my name at their top of their list. And I used LinkedIn to do it. And this is like, back in 2005, right? This actually, this story comes from 2006. It's not my first year. Oh, okay, LinkedIn, okay. But right. I had we'll, been we'll on let, LinkedIn. We'll let that slide, year. Howard. We'll let that Correct. slide. And at the time that I did it, I think I had maybe 150 connections on LinkedIn. So we're not talking a massive network. But I used who I knew to do the right connections, figure out who it was, call a person, email a person, send a LinkedIn message. Mm -hmm. And what that did was when it came time for the final selection process, um, I heard this story from the main contact who I initially was my contact and I knew who they were and whatever. That they had had this meeting to do an RFP, to do that dreaded RFP process for a project. Uh -huh. Yeah, and five of the key decision makers had brought in their top three picks to do an RFP. All five of them had my name on their list. So they said, well, before we go through this process, why don't we bring in Howard? Because we all think he's top of the heap here. So let's find out whether or not we should go through all that. And what I ended up doing as that process was I helped them write their RFP, which I was then going to bid on. So if you've ever done an RFP process, if you get to write it, you basically own the process. They're still going to look for people and do whatever, but we got to write the RFP, we got the job, we charged full price, and it was a very profitable job, and it was a long-time client because we still did good work, but it was the kind of thing where we just, you know, and, and I'll tell you, I used my connections, other people who I knew. We did all the little math that we could to find all the people that we could, but literally in the span of about two weeks, I was able to get my name on the top of the list for that job. And in four Absolutely, weeks, yeah. the, the time between the first time I overheard it and the meeting that I had where I walked in there was about three and a half, four weeks between those two really? events. <laughs> yeah. So okay. it, wasn't, it wasn't an instant thing, but it was, it was something I had to work on, but it was something that there was no way that I could have been on. Like I would have had no idea how to get to everybody without using LinkedIn. It would have just oh, absolutely, been Absolutely, yeah. So... I took that sort of general methodology and I started doing it on a regular basis. Okay, how can I build my network so that when it's time to ask a favor, I have a larger network to work with and they know me. It's not just add connections. It's really do networking through LinkedIn. And the second part network of Networking event, like going to the chamber. It's almost like right. a chamber, only yeah. it's on LinkedIn, yeah. Exactly. And the second part of that was really nurturing that. So that all the way through this process, I didn't just add a connection, but I would then reach out to that connection on a regular basis. And that regular basis might be twice a year, maybe once or twice a year to say, hey, how are you doing? Let me know what you're up to. Is there someone I can introduce you to? All of my communication was giving them a little bit of a, this is me, this is what I'm doing. Tell me what you're up to and tell me who you need to meet. So it was never me reaching out to them saying, buy my stuff, become a client, it was always me asking. No, it's jab, jab, right hook. Exactly. It's jab, jab, right hook. You know, it's like ask, ask, ask. Oh, by the way, if you don't mind helping you out. Exactly. The no. idea being when it was my turn and I needed someone's help, chances are that person had either been helped by me 
or at least been offered many times. I can help you. Let me help you with this, whatever. And the moment I would ask, I always said, look, this is a big favor. Um, I hope I'm not being, you know, you know, too presumptuous. If you don't feel comfortable helping me, it's okay, but I'm comfortable helping you. So even though I'm asking you, please let me do you a favor right away. So it was always a persistent, I will help you out no matter what I can do. Um, even if it's a little bit or a lot, whatever it's going to be, let me try to help you. And Absolutely. I Howard's that. known for that. I mean, Howard's helped me out plenty of times. I, I look at it this way. Mm -hmm. In order to do that, I needed to come up with some methodology to, to do it. And there are CRM systems, and you can put reminders and calendars. And I said, you know what? There's got to be something a little bit simpler. So my mm -hmm. bas basic methodology comes from using the alphabet, that each week I'm going to focus on a different letter. So I'm going to do different activities on LinkedIn because of a letter of the week. So if the letter of the week is the letter R, then all of my contacts are going to hit up Ralph. I'm going to yeah. hit those contacts this week. And then next week it's going to be S and then it's going to be T. I'm going to use that alphabet as a framing mechanism so that I don't miss anything. Because the thing that I found when I started doing it myself, but then when I started training people, was you would get a lot of energy and you would connect with all of the obvious people. It's the not so obvious people where you find your new clients in the best research. The diamonds in the rough. Yes. And those not so obvious people were often the people who said, I'm so glad you reached out to me. I've been thinking about doing a project myself. Can I set up a meeting with you? So mm -hmm. I would reach out to them to say, hey, what are you up to? What's going on in your business? Um, let me know if I can help you with an introduction. And they would reach back and say, I'm so glad that you reached out to me. I've been meaning to get in touch with you. Can we set up a phone appointment because I want to do a, a, I want to do a website? Or can we set up a phone interview because I want to do this? Or can you come to my office and do a presentation of, about how you help web clients? And I kept saying, you know what? I don't consider myself a salesperson. But all of the people on the sales team. I, I asked Howard, the, yeah. the interesting thing is, and you told me that you were going to do this. It's like, Howard, a salesperson? I mean, Howard's a great guy. I mean, anyone who knows Howard knows that he'll do anything for you. He'll give his, you know, his jacket off, <laughs> off his back. But I mean, like, you're not a salesperson. You're just a friendly guy. He knows his technology, knows his stuff, and yep. will do anything for you within reason. You know? Within you reason. Knock off your, not, not me, you won't knock off your, you know, you know, ex-boyfriend or anything like that, but you know, within reason. Exactly. And so what I started figuring out was people who were salespeople were coming to me saying, hey, I really want to get good at, like I've heard LinkedIn can be good. Can, I, can you help me with that? Mm -hmm. And so I started kind of developing how I was going to train them and I started developing some, like my initial tracking system was literally on my calendar, I would write this week is letter A. Next, and then I would write letter B. So I just knew what letter it was per the week. And yeah. then as I developed the system, and it was more than just sending a message, it then became LinkedIn added features. So I was able to take advantage of those features. So for example, um, endorsements. I have a regular, I do endorsements on a different week than I do a daily message. And I have the diff, I do mm -hmm. recommendations on a different week as endorsements. And I do, you know, there's a whole lot of different tactics that you do. Now why do you think of endorsements? I think they're kind of like, they're so... They're recommendations light. It's like diet recommendations. Yeah, but I feel like I get recommendations from people that I don't even know who, who the heck they are. I mean, I've connected with them because they had something interesting. I've reached out to them at some point, you know, whatever, but yeah. they give me recommendations on something that they have no idea that I'm good at. Well, and the, yeah. one of the things that I teach in my course is if you endorse someone, you should know what you're endorsing them for. So I don't endorse people who I've never worked with or I have no idea whether they're good or not or I don't even have, like if someone says to me, this person's a great roofer. I might endorse Unless them. Well, yeah. I might endorse them because like my sister tells me, or if you said to me, Hey, I have a great roofer, I might in, I might pass that endorsement along. But if I don't have that direct or only one degree away mm -hmm. knowledge of that endorsement, then I'm not gonna do it. So I don't recommend that you endorse people for 20 different things. I actually recommend that you endorse someone for two or three different things because in another six months or a year, when you get back around to it, you want to endorse them again. That endorsement's a very lightweight touch. It sends a really simple message out and in the see universe. It. Like, oh, Howard yes. recommended me. That's wonderful. Right. You know, it's like, hey, Howard, how you doing? You know. So I, I don't see it as a replacement for recommendations. I see it as a lightweight touch because you might not have a great story in order to write a really good recommendation, but you do want to say to them, hey, this person does a good job. Check them out. 
a little, so hot, a little bit of a hot tip, yeah. Exactly. So it's a little bit of a, hey, this person does a good thing. So I like using endorsements for that. Again, it's a lightweight touch. It's not a heavyweight touch. Um, a rec when you write a recommendation for someone that's got a great story, well, mm -hmm. that's really powerful. So you can't write 10 of those a day. Where endorsements, you in one day, you can endorse 30 people in about five minutes. If you do, if you know how to do it, you look through, you open up tabs and you click through and you do a nice job. It's one of the things I teach in the course is really how to be efficient with these things so that you're not, you know, I don't want someone you're to spend two down, hours. Not like, right. mm, exactly, yeah. What I want someone want to, to do, do is if you're a salesperson, lots of salespeople will talk about things like prospecting and cold calls. Mm -hmm. I want to trade 20 minutes of cold calling for the activities on LinkedIn. I hate cold I calls. Well, yeah, they're, for me, they've never been successful. And, fr and the frankly, the I can tell you that yeah. uh, you know, when I've had to do cold calls in different situations, the result that I get is so small compared to you know, even five minutes a day of LinkedIn activity that gets such a better result. It's simple things. And, those yeah, and, so, things and cold calls are so much more exhausting than LinkedIn. Yes. Absolutely, way more exhausting. So those kinds of things. The course is really built around building a great network and you build it in advance of when you need it. So if you need it this week, my course is not for you. But if you're saying- no, do, it, do it the next yes. time. Like, you know, pick it up and then learn for next time. That, all right, it's not gonna help me on this time, but it'll help me next yep. time. Exactly, and here's the big thing. Your network is transferable with you as a person. So if you sell a particular product and then as a salesperson, there are people who, you know, they might sell for a particular company for a year, three years, five years, and then they go find another opportunity. And when they get up and leave, they don't have to start from scratch. They can simply say, this is my new job position. In fact, when they update their profile with that new job position, they'll find <laughs> that all of these people on LinkedIn say, hey, congratulations on that job position. And they then have a little bit of a reason to talk to people. Hey, I'm in this new position. I could use your help with a referral because it's new for me. So you, you can use the fact that you are going to go from position to position to position over a long period of time, the network that you built in position A will transfer to position B. Because we connect and do business with people that we trust. The company is like. almost a secondary piece. So mm -hmm. unless the company is a company that people absolutely hate, they're going to look for someone trustworthy. And they're going to ask for advice from someone trustworthy. And that's how you get yourself in that sales process. So... Um, that's kind of my course. I don't want to say it's not. It's my course in a nutshell, but it kind of gives you a sense of what the philosophy is for the course mm -hmm. and how it works. Um, yeah. One of the big differences with my course, and Seth, you've already figured this out, is I give you exactly what to do every single day. I don't give you a um, here's theoretically what you should be doing with LinkedIn. I give you the hi. It's yeah, Monday of yeah. week of week number one. This is what you're going to do on Monday, and this is what you do on Tuesday, and Wednesday, and Thursday, and Friday, and the next week. And I lay those steps out it's there a, because it's, a three month, it's the three month process, right? It's a three it actually month. it's 25 weeks. So oh, it's, 25 weeks. it's we'll what I weeks. figure is yeah. 25 weeks is twice per year that you run through your whole cycle. There are some people. There are people who I've trained who do it at half speed. So what they do is they do it every other week. So they get through it once a year. Now, I think they should be doing it at full speed, which is 25 weeks. And but what I say is do it for 25 weeks, take a week off. 25 weeks, take a week off. That's, that's pretty good. I know some people that will do five weeks and take a week off, you know, or every other week. It's really or someone, like, or someone like me, you know, like, where I, like I, I'm, more, I'm more using it as a reference. Like I'm right. using it as, oh, that's a good idea. I'll click through and say, oh, I want to learn about this today. Right. Yeah, I, turn, there comes Howard. Exactly. Hey, exactly. Well, and the big thing that I recommend is by tracking it and having the, this is what I'm supposed to do this week, you can actually then start measuring how things are working. So for example, if you go to a particular networking event and you connect with people in that networking event and you find out that those people are, re are consistently giving you great referrals, you have a mechanism to measure that networking event versus you, you might find that a particular networking event gives you lots of great connections, but no meetings and no referrals. But you won't know that because they're in your general thing. You have to track it somewhere. And I like giving people a good tracking mechanism that does that. And, you know, all the clients that I've trained that do this, whether they do all of it or some of it, they always say to me, if I'm not writing this stuff down, I'm not doing it. And so okay. that's why I want them to write, the, write it down and have some tracking. Yeah, and I mean, and honestly, if you think about it, what, what was it? Two? How much was it again? Two hundred and twenty-five dollars, and it's two hundred and twenty-five dollars is yeah, which is not 
a lot of money, but it's still enough money that people say, well, I'm going to do this. Yeah. I'm going to pay $225. Yeah. I'm going to darn well sit down and take the 25 weeks and do this correctly. It's exactly. not a free course with all those watches. Like the profile course, which is a great course. And right. I think there's a lot of great tips on it. I fixed up my, my profile. But there's a lot of people that are like, oh, it's free. Oh, I'm going to watch it. Oh, good right. tips. And yeah. you just never do it. But yeah. if you put that money out, you're going to set, that's going to be like a bookmark for you. That it's like, all right. I need that's to do money. this. Maybe a lot of money, but especially in this economy, that's a lot of money. It's not, that's not terrible, but that's money that, you know, they're, they're going to go back and they're going to do their course. So. Absolutely. Well, and one of the things I want to talk about um, is mm -hmm. I, you know, switching for me, I'd been doing web development since 1993 mm -hmm. um, and really doing it professionally, um, whether it was my own business or I worked at different companies. Um, I'd been doing it for so long and all the way through this, I was always working with clients and teaching them, you know, whether it was a trick or new habits or all kinds of different things. And a few years ago, I kind of said to myself, I want to change. I want to switch this because um, it's not that I'm done doing web development, but I kind of feel like I have such a passion for education. How can I switch and go yes. from, you know, and go from the traditional "Hey, you do web development" to really teaching these things and building the courseware? Um, and I think the and you know, helping I'm, people out yeah. and helping people out. And I'd been doing workshops and webinars, uh, whether they were a sales tool or something through a local chamber or the Philadelphia Business Journal. I'd been doing these workshops, and the response that I got from that, uh, from all the people that attended, was always super duper positive. Super and on duper. top, <laughs> super duper positive. And on top of that, I always felt so energized when I did it and after I did it. I was like, man, if I could do this all the time, this would be great. Mm -hmm. And I kept trying to figure out, well, how do I do that? And I started looking at the development of online courses, and I said, you know, if I can build good courses, I can then have a version of the course that's very easy for someone to say, I want to get this. And then if someone says, hey, we want to bring him in for a larger event, well, that makes sense. I kind of look yeah, at these yeah, courses absolutely. as a, uh, a very uh, efficient way to spend money on something mm -hmm. really great where you don't have to, uh, like, a, a client that would train with me to learn the system, they would typically train anywhere between 15 and 20 hours, which ended up being a pretty Good significant sport. investment. Um, it, it could cost them somewhere between $1,500 and $2,000 in training to oh get God. them in wow. place. And that's I looked at that yeah. and I said, that's a lot of money. Now, you are getting your hand held and I'm working with you on things and customizing it exactly for you, but that's a lot of money. And there are a lot of salespeople who would say, look, um, this is coming out of my pocket because my employer, you know, they're willing to train me this way, but they don't really know whether LinkedIn's going to be good. So I'd have to pay this out of my pocket. Mm -hmm. So I started looking at it saying, well, how can I get someone my training in a really efficient way so that if they come to me and say, I don't have two grand to spend on training, I say, well, $225, there you go. Um, and that's kind of, and I wanted to put it together so that you would get all of the greatest hits of that. And, yeah. you know, email me, ask me questions. Hey, I'm trying to do this. What do you think? And you have um, a user forum on there too. I do have forums on there. They're, they're new. So the course is brand new. The forums are new. So there's not a lot of activity on the forums. Uh, but uh, it's definitely something where, you know, people post and say, hey, I, like for the profile course, people would say, can you look at my profile? And I post the response yeah. to it. So it becomes a way for other people to learn about it mm -hmm. as well. Um, it's something where I want to share with people. If I feel like I can teach you by sharing, if I can share what I'm teaching you with other people and that becomes Absolutely. a way for people to learn, then I'm just going to do it. And that's kind of how I've done it my whole life and I'm going to keep doing pay, it. Pay it forward, yeah. Exactly. Awesome. So where can people find you online? Uh, best thing to do is go to howardyermish.com. That's the start of all places. The I am, start of all places. You can find all the links to everything, whether it's Twitter or Facebook mm -hmm. or LinkedIn from my main website. Uh, Facebook is facebook.com slash Howard Yermish because that's kind of obvious and that gets you to my Facebook business page. Uh, Twitter is H Yermish, the letter H and Y E R M I S H. If you go to the Howard Yermish account, you'll see the account that says you're at the wrong account. Go click on this one. Um, that was something it, it, that I, it's funny. I always laugh. I go there just for fun to torment them. Uh, well, and if the, every so often I will post a new tweet that say, wait, you're following me here? That's the wrong account. You should go over to this way. Just in case for some reason if someone is following it, uh, there's a little thing there. And when people do follow that account, I will send them a direct message that says, hey, wrong account. This is the right one. Um, 
because you know it's I, I don't want people looking at a, at a effectively a dead account. It's not a dead account. It's I, I monitor it. It's a placeholder. It's there to make sure that people find the right one. Um, so that's you know best place to find me is the website. Um, one of the things that I wanted to do, uh, I'm on Philly Tech all the time because of social media addicts. But yeah, I wanted to and he also is in the beginning of the show at the Patreon plea, which is is which is um. Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Philly Tech Org. Please give. You give other great people like Howard on here. That's his voice. His exactly. His voiceover stuff for us. Exactly. So we appreciate it. Um, but uh, the coupon code that I set up is Philly Tech. So if you Ooh. use all capitals, the coupon code Philly Tech, you get $50 off the course. Great. Now that coupon yeah, is only that. good until the end of November. So, and this is November of 2015. So if you're looking at it in the future and you're going, oh man, I really wish that I could still get this course, you can still get the course. What I would highly recommend is that you uh, follow me in one of the places because I do post little coupon codes, not as good as the $50 one, um, no, but the $50 oh coupon God. code is, it's there so that people can definitely take advantage of the course. Getting it for only 175 is a, it's, 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 it's a steal. It's a steal. Um, here's mm -hmm. the other thing. Um, if you don't want to watch the course on my own platform, some people have said, oh, well, is, you've, is it anywhere else? I actually, the course is approved on Udemy, and you can get the course on Udemy. It's 225. Is it YOU? It's Udemy, the letter U, U-D-M, or U-D-E-M-Y dot com, and I think it's it's powerful dash social dash sales dash LinkedIn. But if oh, you just it's a good one. It's, if, it's good how I learned that how are yes. watch it on this platform. But I've had some people who've said, Hey, um, I really want to use it this way, or I really want to show it to someone. If they love using a platform like Udemy, you can absolutely use it there. I have the, mm -hmm. the same course materials are there. There are forums there as well that it just got approved on Udemy the other day. Uh -huh. um, and, and it's interesting because they're, they let you do coupon codes too. It's a little bit different in terms of the timing and the numbers and all that stuff. So um, my take is, is this. The best place to do it is on my own platform. And the reason is because that's where I'm going to pay attention and have the most up-to-date version of the course so that as LinkedIn changes things, I will change some things. As these different things come up, you know, the updates will happen there. Udemy has a little bit of a time delay. Uh, not a lot, but a little bit of a time delay. They do have forums. Um, it's just not as easy for me to manage and monitor those forums. So Absolutely. I want you on my own platform because that's the best. HowardYermish.com, H-O-W-A-R-D. Y-E-R-M-I-S-H.com. -E -E com. And thank you, Howard, for being on the show. Oh, it's my before. pleasure. Please go to patreon.com slash phillytechorg. Give a cent, give a, you know, a dollar, give you know, a little bit here and there. Helps you bring great people on like Howard on the show. And visit our, our wonderful sponsors. They are on the post roll. So make sure you visit Wistia, Flywheel, and Zoho Mail. And we thank them for their sponsorship. Howard, this is great, and we'll, you know, I'll see you later on this week when we do. I'll probably talk to you next day or so. Exactly, <laughs> I can't get enough of Howard. There you go. <laughs> oh, virtual hug. Virtual hug. There you go. Bye. <laughs> High five. Whoa. All right. All right that's enough. All right. <laughs> see you guys. This is episode right, forty. Care. Woo woo. We did Thank forty you. of these so far. Take, take care. <laughs>